Moreno Valley is like a special place to me, man. It's like, it's everything. It's where I grew up. I grew up on, you know, Paris and Sunny Me, Paris and Alessandro, you know what I'm saying? This is like, it was everything to us at one point. That was the whole world, you know? You might see a, a basketball player like Kawhi Leonard, you know, just hooping. You might see a football player like, you know, like like Tyron Smith, you know, he's just out there. You see him working every single day. You might see an actor like like a like a like a Terrell Hill. You know what I'm saying? You might see a rapper like Will Evans. Will Evans. Will Evans. Will Evans. Hey guys, welcome back to Using My Story. So so excited today. We have a great, great guest. You know, every week we come, we share stories of how people have overcome. And really, it's just to motivate everyone and, and help people to see that no matter what they're struggling with, they can make it out. And uh, today I have a really cool guest, Will Evans, urban legend Will Evans, man. So good to be here with you. Can you just introduce yourself and share a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. My name is Will Evans. I come from Moreno Valley, California. Um, just blessed to be here, man. I'm just grateful to be here. Just, you know, hearing about some of the stories and different things, man. This, this is something I'm excited to do, man. So. I'm, I'm just a, a humble dude from Reno Valley, man, content creator, um, businessman, father, husband. And yeah, man, that's just a little bit about me. Awesome, man. Well, you know, <clears throat> so excited to have you because I know you have you like a, you, you have music. Yeah, you, you're funny as heck. Thank you. Man. Sometimes I just watch your stuff for a while and just share it with everybody. Yeah, I'm just you. I'm dying, man, because it's crazy, you're, especially that warehouse stuff and and uh, just being in the hood, bro, yeah, it's, yeah. it's cool. It's relatable. Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. And until recently, I didn't know you had the type of history or background that you had. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people would say, like, man, someone that's happy like that, someone that's doing good like that. Yeah. Uh, they can't put that. They can't connect that with where you came from. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we usually have questions we go over, but I don't even want to talk about the questions. I just want you to share your story, bro. Yeah. Because I feel like that's going to help a lot of people. Um, so go ahead. Let it rip. Yeah, man. So uh, growing up, um, I come from Reno Valley, California. Like I said, um, had teen parents, very young parents. I was the only my family. We had a family of five growing up. Me, older brother and a younger sister. I'm a middle child. OK. Uh, like I said, teen parents, man. And you know, just by the grace of God, I was even, I even had my father in my life, you know, back, wow. especially back in those times. Oh yeah. Um, young parents, you know, normally the father didn't stick around back then. Actually, uh, on the block I grew up on, uh, we had the only dad on the whole block. Nah. So my dad was kind of like everybody dad. He was the only one getting up, going to work. And, <laughs> you know, he was working for what, and my parents, uh, I always say they're my biggest blessings because, wow. because of them, I, I wasn't able to make any excuses, you know, um, uh, if you have parents like my parents, uh, my dad was working dude, didn't graduate high school, um, you know, but it was able to make a success of himself anyway. So uh, he was a felon, um, you know, he went to uh, prison early on in his life. And, you know, I could never make an excuse to that man. Like there was yeah. nothing that I can come to him and bring him say, dad, this is too hard. I can't do this. Yeah. You know, he, he'll look at me like, man, I've been to jail. I had kids young. You know, <laughs> and I work my way from six dollars an hour to where I am. He he, six figure earner now. You know, nice. So he was a huge blessing. My mom, teen mom, um, you know, graduated high school with two babies, me and my brother. Um, you know, and there was nothing you could tell that woman about why you couldn't be successful. She was a complete dreamer, um, and it, that was completely opposite of my dad. My dad was very realistic. You need to do this, do this, do this, yeah. and that's how you're gonna win. And my mom was very much of a dreamer. She was very much, uh, you know, you have to believe in yourself trust God you could do all things through Christ and you know I was blessed to have both the, of them as that balance so um that's a little bit about my childhood man and that kind of established my personality you know yeah. just coming from the environment that we come from um you know we didn't have much but we always had each other mm -hmm. and that was plenty you know what I mean yeah. that was plenty so you grow up in poverty man uh you see all the same things that everybody in poverty see you see uh addiction you see gangs you see violence you see uh, all the things that come with poverty, crime, and then you see the, the, the positive parts of it too, where it's like community and yeah. love and togetherness and family. And we don't have much, but we, we all gonna come together and make sure yeah. we're taken care of. And the neighborhood looks out for the kids, you know? Yeah. Um, so we had all that, I had all that growing up, um, you know, and it was just a blessing. So that was a little bit about my, my early life. Nice, yeah. nice. So you grew up, that's that's awesome, man. It, your dad's like the community dad. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So so. Then as you got older, 
when do you feel like because i know offline we were talking about a little bit of your history and your past and uh when do you feel like things started taking a turn and what did what did that look like yeah so my parents divorced when i was maybe like 11 12 years old okay um i went to live with my grandmother when i was 14 just because i kept getting in trouble um you know and they were my parents were going through so much that i don't think they really could focus yeah uh 100 like they wanted to but they did the best they could um but i did go live with my grandmother in reno valley for uh when i was about 14 years old and at that time i started getting involved in crime and street stuff and mm. you know just the things that that make you feel cool in the environment yeah. um you know and then at, at that point you want to make money because you feel like making money is going to get you the nice things that make mm -hmm. people like you and it's going to buy you the self-esteem that yeah. is going to make people think you're cool and um yeah man so I, I got involved in that stuff um just different different crimes and i was doing crime a lot uh early on and then you know i end up getting caught when i as soon as i turned 18 it felt like finally get caught that's how it happens for a lot of people yeah um you get you turn 18 you get caught get away with everything and then yeah, you turn 18. Man. And looking back, I probably wasn't getting away with much. The police was probably letting a lot slide because you're yeah. a kid. You know, uh, they would come to the house and different things like that. But they'd be like, oh, he's a minor. We'll get him when he's 18. Yeah. And they did, man. So when I turned 18, I got caught up um, on a robbery case. And I went away for a little while. And then I came home. Um, yeah, man, I was just like, all right, I got to find something to do. So I started doing music. Okay. And that's where that came from. I started oh, doing nice. music to have some type of positive outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So I did that. And yeah, uh, a couple years later, my son is born. Wow. Um, and I just was like, all right, cool. I'm a dad. Now I'm 21. I'm a dad. Uh, you know, I got to figure this thing out. Uh, was still like one foot in, one foot out uh, as far as the streets. And I was trying to change, though. I, I had a, a, a mindset of I need to do something different. Yeah. Um, but at that point, I hadn't fully committed to changing my life. And I always knew God and stuff like that. I just felt like I suppressed my my conscience to yeah. you know be a, involved in the environment. Cause your, cause your mom your mom raised you, of course. Yeah, she raised you to have a relationship with God. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I think um, even the blessing in that, my mom and my grandmother's just praying all the time. And yeah, you know, those are probably some of the prayers that kept me alive through a lot of the stuff that I went through. Yep. Um. So yeah, man. One one day I'm 22 years old. Uh, you know, going out somewhere to get in a fight and end up getting shot four times. Wow. Uh, my uncle was killed in that situation, killed in front of me. Wow. Um, yeah, he was shot five times. I was shot four times. I survived. Man. And um, yeah, man, from that point on, it kind of was like a relapse. Like I got worse back into the street okay. because of what happened. I was like yeah. angry. And um, you know, that situation resolved. And maybe a year after that, I was, you know, uh, like, all right, man, I gotta, I gotta do a lot better for my son and mm -hmm. for myself. And I changed my life, man. I changed my life. I started, you know, trying to figure out, uh, the music business, which led me into entertainment business, mm -hmm. which led me into how do people make money in this really? Yeah. Because I wasn't seeing it making money for me the way I needed it to not enough to provide for my, yeah. my uh, family. So yeah, man, I, um, got into business more. I always wanted to be a businessman. I just didn't have the outlets, you know? Yeah. Uh, I always had that entrepreneur spirit, but in the environment that we come from, they take that entrepreneur spirit and they say, you need to sell drugs. You need to yeah. do crime with it. You need to and they pervert it. They pervert it, man. So wow. um, I realized that that wasn't the way around 22, 23 years old. And I just was like, man, I need to figure out how they make money. And then I realized uh, how social media makes money and how mm -hmm. entertainment business makes money. And I realized it was all advertisement. Wow. And so that kind of uh, led me into uh, getting more into content, getting more into social media and figuring out how to make money for myself off of it. That's good. I think that's huge because I, I had a similar, you know, coming up, uh, you know, a lot of the hustling, yeah. you know, it started with, uh, you remember those little things they put on the tree mm -hmm. or like with a little piece of paper and you peel it off. Yeah, I know exactly. What you're I was like, leaving middle school and I saw it like, oh, you want to make money? You're, yeah, you're, rip one of these Yeah, off. take one off. Yeah. So we started selling a, you had to sell like that big old tub of like $20 chocolates. Yeah, yeah, I know, <laughs> you at the gas station. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so we got one of those and it had like the $50 coloring books, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. stuff nobody wanted to buy, bro. Like it's too, it's too expensive. And then you got to sell it in the hood on yeah, top of that. Exactly. So I even at that age, I went with somebody and they were. I was like, "Man, how's it? How do you guys get people to buy these twenty dollars chocolates?" Mm -hmm. And they're like, "You know what? It ain't even about the chocolates." I said, "It's not. 
They're like, no, you got to get him to give you donations. Mm -hmm. And I was like, donations? They're like, so so they taught me, bro. We were coming back with full bins of merchandise, but Uh we still had all kinds of money in our pocket. (laughs) So they were like, yeah, I never been to Six Flags before. I never Mm -hmm. been to Knott's. You know, I know you don't want to buy these twenty dollar chocolates, but can you make a donation? Yeah, you hustling? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it started at that point, and and then to the Kirby vacuums. Uh, I don't yeah, know if yeah, you yeah. ever got oh, into that man. hustle. That's one of the biggest hustles yeah. where I come from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know. I was like, man, how are we gonna sell these fifteen hundred dollar vacuums, vacuums in yeah. the hood? Mm-hmm. So it was. It wasn't about selling the vacuums. It was about shampooing people's carpets. Yes. For two, three hundred bucks. It's like the guy in the mall that that he won't sh- uh, sell the shoe cleaner, but yeah. he'll, he'll wash the shoes for ten bucks right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and where, where I come from, man, it was like that was the energy of the city. Like everybody wasn't, you weren't, people weren't super aggressive all the time. Uh-huh. But everybody was about money, and everybody yeah. was about working and hustling and trying to figure it out. So, yeah, man, I had a lot of that entrepreneur spirit early on, man. I just wanted to, I wanted to be successful, bro. Yeah. All my life, I always wanted to be exactly where I am now, you know, and. So for me to get here is just a huge blessing. And I worked every job you could think of, bro. Like, I, I worked everywhere that I what could What do you think is out. the most humbling job you ever had? Probably one of my first jobs, man, was at Food for Less. And okay. every time I go to the grocery store, I always look at those guys like, man, when <laughs> I was 19, I was out there pushing carts. Yeah. You know, when I was 20 years old, I was out there, you know, uh, cleaning the bathroom, squeegee in the bathroom yeah. and doing sweeps at Food for Less. And I think that was one of the most humbling things because... When you uh, come out the environment and it's a fast money environment, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, working a job is not necessarily the coolest things, especially you out there in the summer pushing carts or you in a warehouse, man. And, you know, your friends, they make it look like they got so much going on and you're missing so much. But, man, those were the things that separated me from my peers, bro, because I was willing to humble myself and say, you know what, I'm going to take this job. And I'm a uh, and I didn't know back then what I was doing, but really I was just giving something to God, which was faith, you know? That's good. Faith that he would change my life. And, um, you know, I did, I was just trying to do the right thing. Yeah. You know, and yeah. uh, that just led me into into more opportunities, bro. Like this job will lead into that job, that job will lead into this job. And then uh, I found a construction job finally and I stayed nice. there for like four years, bro. Um, and that was like probably the longest I had ever been at a job. Yeah. Everything so you know how to do that. construction? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, what, kind of, what kind of construction we was you doing, do? Uh, we was building hotels, man. We was doing all kind of different stuff. We would put uh, windows and doors and everything at houses. And that's when my actually my first experience uh, seeing a mansion in real life. Yeah. Um, at those jobs, man. And it's crazy for me now. I live in one and I'm like, man, I walk around like, man, I remember going into yeah. people's houses to put like a door in or install a window or something and being looking around like how do they afford this like you start crying uh man i've had many moments at my house where i remember like just thinking to myself how how can i be building these for people and i can't own one for myself man you know and yeah man so it's like a, a full uh it's like full circle dream. for me it's a dream for me bro it's a dream i remember those days just walking in those people's houses and just be like man this is beautiful bro yeah. if i could get one percent of this yeah i'll be happy and yeah yeah i have a similar home now so it's, it's a huge blessing bro that's amazing yeah and i know a lot of people like what you're talking about is huge because a lot of people say you know they learn how to hustle yeah and that's the quick money and then and then they try to start doing good and it's like pennies on the dollar sometimes yeah man and, and that's a big thing to overcome for a lot of people and a lot of them can't overcome it yeah man they can't because it's just too it's like going back they see it as going backwards yeah it's too tempting yeah mm-hmm. so why don't you talk a little like so just so you know we have a lot of different kind of people that watch we got people we got parents uh we got you know children we got people that are already doing good and we got people who aren't doing good like a lot i would say the majority of the people that watch are people that are still in the struggle yeah um and 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 they don't think there's a way out but it's crazy bro like some people will be like i watch your stuff every day uh because that's what keeps me going yeah I'm like dang yeah you know what i mean so but share a little bit about that mm-hmm. for those people that are watching that don't see a way out like talk them through that mentality because it's a it's a mentality that you it have is, like man. there's no other way to do it this is the only way but that's a lie it's a lie bro there okay i'll start with the the most necessary component of it bro is faith 
Like you have to have an unwavering, almost delusional yeah. faith that it's going to work out for you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is enough for God to give you a sign to get to the next thing. That's good. So God will give you a sign and be like, okay, you had a little bit of faith. You started with this job. See, the way, the way it works, bro, is we pray. We'll, we'll pray for, oh, man, I just want to be rich. I want to be rich, right? Mm -hmm. Or... And we'll pray for a job to God, yeah. for God to make us rich. Give me a good job yeah. that just pays me a lot. And God will give you a bike. He'd be like, yeah. a bike? Like, what am I, do what am I going to do with this, right? <laughs> and that bike is for you to ride to work. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you can make the money yeah. from the first job that doesn't pay you that much. Yeah. And then God sees that you took that bike and you roll to work with it. Yeah. And then he blesses you with a car from that job. Wow. And then he, somebody give you a car. You have yeah. something. I can afford a car now. You take that car and now you can drive to a longer distance jobs. You can commute mm -hmm. to a better job. And yeah. that's how it works, bro. So it's like you have a little bit of faith. God will put a little bit on it. Yeah. And you'll be able to take that to the next thing. And you repeat the process. Being and faithful with a little. Being faithful with a little. Little, he'll wow. make you ruler over many, right? Wow. So. Come yeah. on, man. So, man, you got to you gotta have the little bit of faith. That's the major component. Wow. Um, just unwavering you that's know what good. i mean like even when it feels like everybody is telling you like man that's stupid and don't do that and that's real too and that's gonna happen bro i had so many friends tell me yeah, you gotta be realistic man you gotta be just just get a job man and do this yeah. and, like man, jail, them jailhouse lawyers oh man you know how that goes you yeah. to get 50 you, get this, yeah. so you might as well do this yeah. and that's <laughs> it's that too bro like i've been through all of it bro and i always pray that my life is a reflection of faith you know like because there was a point that I couldn't even see becoming 30 years old. I'm going to be 30 in June. Wow. Um, wow. I remember being 18, like, man, I wonder what I'm going to look like when I'm 30, man. Yeah. Like, what am I going to, how am I going to talk? What am yeah. I going to be? Where am I going to be in life? And just not wanting to be a failure. Wow. And just looking around and seeing, you know, oh, man, we got drug dealers, killers, like, you know, some people in jail. My pops used to always say this, like, some people going to be in jail when you get older. Some people going to be in the streets. Some people going to be doctors. Some people going to be lawyers. Some people going to go to college. And you, you just want to be somebody that has success. So, yeah, uh, it was a it was a huge uh, thing that just keep faith, bro. And it's good. after the faith, after you have faith, now you got to work. You know, mm. your work is is proof that you have faith. That's good. You know, if you don't, you, you can pray and pray and pray. But if you're not willing to get up and put the work in, then you're not proving your faith. You know faith what I mean? Without, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. So it doesn't. It's not by works alone or by faith alone. You need both, right? Preaching so, up in here now. Yeah, man, it's the truth. And, and <clears throat> you know, I just believe that, man. I just believed if I had faith that I would get the opportunities, and the opportunities ended up coming, and I would just take advantage of them, full advantage yeah. of them. And when I had the opportunity to, you know, do my own thing, I did it, man. And that takes faith because, yeah, like you said, you get caught up in these cycles of. I'm getting fast money, fast money, fast money. But, you know, you have to be uh, willing to lose something to gain something, yeah. you know. And I heard a saying that was dope to me. It said, no, no earthly loss can ever outweigh a spiritual gain, mm. you know. So um, I just learned throughout the process of my life that if I just have faith to do the next thing right, you know, they say that God is not a light, a light on the horizon. He's a light at your feet. So he don't show you what's way out there. Yeah. He just show you the next step. Yep. You yep. know? So if you just pay attention to what's the next step, yeah. eventually you'll be way out there. Yeah. And um, I believe that, bro. Um, I walked with it and I just, I tried to, you know, just use wisdom uh, on what was the right move. Um, and I started creating an environment based on the life I wanted. So okay. I stopped hanging out with certain friends. You know, I stopped That's going good. certain places. Um, you know. Talk about that. Hang, stop hanging out with friends. Yeah. Because we have a quote, like, my pastor has this quote, tell me who your five closest friends are and I'll tell you where you're going. Yes. And sometimes with, there's a withdrawal from drugs. You know, when you stop using, you get withdrawals. But I notice there's also a withdrawal when you stop hanging out with certain friends. Oh, man. It's kind of painful. It, it's crazy, bro, because that's one of the, the I, if I could say I had an addiction, that's probably what it was. Just wow. being involved in the streets. You know what I mean? Like, man, I would get excited hearing street stories and yeah. like, hearing about the homie that just beat up this guy and the, yeah. the homie that they just got in a shootout over here and that stuff would excite me and and mm. my biggest I, I spoke about it online like my, one of my biggest things man uh recently is just I, it was it was confirmation that I, i've become a different person mm. um because 
I don't even want to be around that type of stuff. Like when I would get something new, I would go straight back home. Yeah. You know, I get a new car, I'm going straight back home to show them I got yeah. a new car. And yeah. it didn't matter what it was. Um, if I made some money, I'm going back home to spend it. Wow. <laughs> and um, one of the biggest things for me now, bro, is just uh, I don't have that urge or that feeling or that temptation to go back to the environment yeah. that I come from and be involved in the streets or, you know. So, man, when I was in jail, an older man, and uh, they, they all say this, but yeah. just one of the saying people, places, and things, right? Yeah. You got to change the people that you talk to for no reason, the places that you go for no reason, and the things that you do for no reason. Yeah. And the biggest part of that for me was the no reason part. Because mm. it makes you question yourself. Mm. Why am I talking to this person? Yeah. Why am I going here? Yeah. You know, why do I do that? Um, so when I had the opportunity to do different, um, I did it, man. So I think it's, it's getting out of survival mode. And this is another big thing that I would share with the audience. Understanding how small our environments are in comparison to the world. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, where we come from, we think it's so important. You think that the respect from your homeboys and, and the respect that you get in those environments are so important. Yeah. And it's really it's really so small compared wow. to like people are living lives every single yeah. you know city in this world, bro. So nobody in somebody in Jerusalem doesn't care about <laughs> Jerusalem. You know what's going on in Moreno Valley. <laughs> yeah. And when you take it outside of that and you start traveling and seeing the world, man, I, I can I, I think that's one of the best things that I've done for myself is mm. Um, take myself out the environment. I, I got to credit my mom to that because she always said she just didn't want us to be neighborhood kids. That's good. And they couldn't afford to take us on vacations every year. Yeah. But I vividly remember them taking us to the Grand Canyon one year and and Vegas another year. And those yeah. are our vacations Vegas, outside yeah, of Grandma's yeah. house, right? Yep, yep. Outside of going to Grandma's house in the summer, those are the two vacations yeah. I've been on as a child. And um, my mom, she used to always say, I just don't want you guys to be neighborhood kids. I want you to know that mm. there's a world out there. Wow. And um, I got on my first plane when I was 19, my first uh, flight when I was 19 years old. I went to Seattle, Washington, and it made me realize that, dang, there's a there's a whole world out there. Like, yeah. these people never heard of me, where I come from, my friends, and I could go here and do something different with my life. Yeah. So wow. I think that's important, too, just being well-cultured and traveled. And um, if you can get out, even if it's a road trip, bro, Yeah. take it, take it go see that there's something else other than what you know. Because if you don't, you kind of get caught up in this mindset that everything on these these five little blocks around me is the whole world. It comes like a lid it's over a lid. you. Yeah. Caps. Yeah. And that's wow. the biggest, that's one of the biggest things, man. Like, it, it's a lot that goes into it. But yeah, man, I, I, I would I would say that those are some of the uh, biggest things that you have to change. I like that. One thing I'm taking away from this, from you, and I think a lot of people will, is you know you might not have anything mm -hmm. you know most most of the time people are lacking something and they say that that's why they can't do xyz yeah but what i think a lot of people could take from this is if you could dream yes get a vision yes that vision will take you out of the box you're in yeah yeah and it's okay if you're making minimum wage it's okay if you if if you're a temp yeah, man. You know I mean, I remember. I remember being a temp Me in the too. warehouse. Me too, man. I, I have did my it. name badge. Me too. I don't even <laughs> you know, know you. I don't even know yeah. <laughs> you. Anonymous. Yep. It's okay. You're, you're just do, you're just gonna do it for a little while because mm -hmm. you you know you're not gonna stay here. You're going over there. You paying. You really paying your dues, man. Like yeah. And, and it's it's man. It's just been such a blessing that I'll go back to my parents because I do say that that was my biggest blessing. Like yeah. the balance of a dad who was like not much of a dreamer at all yeah. and the mom that was a dreamer it had i had this balance of believing yourself but understand that you're gonna have to work for what you want yep and i, I was the same bro temp temp agency to temp agency select staff and yeah. staff mark and you know uh all them agencies man and they keep just, holding that permanent over your oh, head like, man three months you're fired yeah. because we don't want to give you insurance and, <laughs> Like, bro, yeah. reassignment after reassignment. I did that, man. I did the streets. I did jail. I did all of it, bro. Like, I, I went through every every trial and tribulation. That's why when people come to me and they ask me on, you know, for advice on how to how to succeed and how to get out of the circumstance, I can tell them from a real place, man. Yeah. Because I did it. I did it. Um, I, sometimes I look back and it's almost like I can't believe that that was actually me. Like, man, that was, that was me. Yeah. You know? Um. 
So yeah, man, when you guys see those people pushing carts at Food for Less, uh, or you see somebody working in a container at a warehouse, 115 degrees, yeah. or, <laughs> you know, if you see them guys at the construction site, or if you see them guys in the street or them guys in courtrooms or whatever, I was all those guys, man. So right. don't ever, don't ever uh, sleep on yourself. Don't ever sleep on uh, other people. And through, through Christ, bro, all things are possible, man. I like that. Now we're going to wrap it up soon, but I know you have a heart for the youth. Of course. Yeah. You have a heart for the young people and um, they're, psh, man, I guess so many young people that reach out yeah. <clears throat> and a lot of times, you know, they're doing things to fit in. Um, for the next two minutes, can you share a little bit with the young people that feel tempted yeah. to go down that road so they can fit in? Yeah. Um, being cool is not what's going to make you successful. Like I know a lot of people that are, that were the coolest people in the world when I was young. And then I get older. I'm like, man, I would never want my kid to be like <laughs> that dude. And, or you'll look back on it and be like, why was I listening to that dude? Um, being cool is not what is going to create the life that you want for yourself. It's actually going to hold you back. I see a lot of people that are, especially in entertainment industry, they're, they call it fake it till you make it. Mm. And I, I feel like that's the worst like path that you can go down to be successful because wow. you spend so much energy faking it that you never actually make it. Mm. And um, so I would tell the youth, man, it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to not do what your friends do. And especially if you come from the hood, the hood will tell you that things that are not cool in the hood you shouldn't do like for example you you might see somebody with a camera uh yeah. filming uh a cat let's say yeah, it, he's yeah. this guy's just walking around filming a cat yeah and in the hood they'll make fun of you for that Man, look, look at this weirdo walking around <laughs> filming cats right but that guy could be filming that for a documentary that mm -hmm. goes to netflix on the life of cats and he would be a success if he just yeah. stuck with it but in the hood, they'll tell you, they'll shame you for that. It will. Um, so you have to, you have to be an individual. You have to be a leader, not a follower. You know, you have to be willing to go against the grain and say, you know what, this ain't cool, but this is what I'm gonna do. Um, and I, I think just that that loss of wanting to be accepted uh, by by people where you come from, um, I think that's that's a huge thing for the youth, man. And, and it's hard nowadays because of social media, and I'm supposed to have this, man. This is another big thing for you that I, I really do want to share is take mm. your time, you know, take your time because it's always a sped up clock when you're yeah. young. You know, you feel like you don't have that much time. You got to be done by the time you're 25 and I got to be a millionaire by the time I'm this and mm. I got to be married by the time I'm that. And man, do what is in the will of God, because God's timing is so perfect, bro. That's good. And um, yeah, man, I, I would have made a lot less mistakes if I wasn't trying to rush and get it. Um, if I would have just walked, I probably would have got it faster. Ironically, if I wasn't trying to rush. Yeah. That's good. Um, so I gotta, I, I would say to, to the youth, man, take your time, do things the right way. Don't worry about moving fast. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Turn the phone off, you know, and lock in on who you are, what you need to do and what's best for you. Because the best version of you is the only version that you can get. You can't get the best version of somebody else. That's good. So. That's real, man. Well, you know, for everybody watching, whether you're struggling with addiction, mental health, if you're struggling with poverty, if you've just been having a rough time breaking out, you know, I think after today, get a dream. Spend some time thinking about what you want your life to look like yeah. and chase after that. And I'm living proof. It's possible. Yeah. Will, you're living proof. 100%, man. And uh, make sure you guys follow Will. Yeah. You will not regret it. This guy's hilarious. He has good the motivation. Man, you're, you're an inspiration to me, bro. Thank you, bro. I, I feel, I'm excited. Man, I'm I, excited I about it some too, good, man. You know, I feel good after this. This man. is, I, I'm getting hyped up just oh, thinking man, about I all this. It, man. It's, it's a blessing, man. And just to be able to share with your audience, I appreciate you having me on. And, you know, I just, again, like you said, man, be dreamers, be dreamers, sit, visualize who you're going to become every day. But take 30 minutes out your day, just sit in silence and visualize who you'll become. I promise you it pays off, man. That's good. I like that. Well, make sure you guys share this with anyone who needs it. Continue to subscribe and follow, and we'll see you guys next time.